Hello again, minions. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the PS5 versus the Xbox Series X and S. See how they compare, which one you should get if you're trying to decide between the two, or whether or not you should just get both or neither. Let's go talk about it. Okay, so let's start with the PS5, kind of arbitrarily, and because with all the hype around the launches of the new consoles, PS5 has gotten the lion's share and has been, as it seems, the hardest to find. Uh, it was, for pre-orders, the most difficult for me to find because of the whole PS5 fiasco with the early pre-order leaks. So, a um, few things that I... First, I want to cover the positives for each of these and then the negatives. So, we'll do the PS5, go through the Xbox series and then we'll discuss uh, a little bit more at the end so the pros for the ps5 and the first one actually i was gonna fire it up here um the first one is actually the ps5's dual sense controller which is let's just say kind of lives up to the hype now i'm gonna fire up astro's playroom here to see if it'll pull up the uh the intro uh for the controller but it's basically kind of like a tech demo for the hardware and the controller. And it does more than live up to uh, kind of the hype of what it does. So let's get into here and talk about it. Okay, so it's got the, I've played this a little bit. Otherwise it normally launches directly into the controller demo the first time you launch it. But if you go into the controller demo for this, it's the easiest place. And this comes with every PS5. This will be installed uh, by default. Um, as you can hear the controller speaker it's talking and it's vibrating um, but with every PS5 when you install it this is a free game that comes with it and it basically is a tech demo to show you all the cool stuff that your controller does so the vibration uh, that goes along with that um, the adaptive triggers you can feel the resistance like there there's some pull and there's some resistance and then you click through it And that can change, right? So it's not always like this. They can be harder, softer, and the game developer gets to implement that. That is by far the coolest thing about the PS5 controller, as far as I'm concerned. But for shooter games, which I play a lot of, it's fucking irritating. Like in Call of Duty Cold War, I turned it off after, like, kind of playing through the campaign for a couple of reasons. One, it slows down your responsiveness, because, like, some wep weapons have, like, really heavy trigger pulls, and versus something that has no resistance, it's just... It'll actually make your fingers tired over time, and it slows down your ability to respond. So it's cool. It's immersive. It would be great for sing it is great for single player experiences, and I think there's going to be some cool like implementations for this in the future. Um, so it's awesome that it's in the controller, but I turn it off for shooters, like especially if I'm playing multiplayer or competitive. So uh, that's cool. The touchpad comes back from the PS4, but. That's cool. I mean, it was not used for anything on the PS4. <laughs> like, at all. Probably won't either here. Motion sensor's cool. The vibration, the haptic feedback on this is amazing. Um, it has a microphone, which is great. If you don't have a headset, you can do this. Although, I don't know if that's a good thing. I remember when they started including headsets in every Xbox 360. And then, that's why Xbox Live is so toxic. Um... But yeah, I mean, so one of the things that it does in the Astro's Playroom is you can like blow into the microphone and stuff. I mean, so there's there's different gameplay things they can do with it, but the controller uh, is amazing. So I don't, let's not get lost in there. We'll talk about that in the cons. I don't like the way that they've updated the XMB. So yeah, so the controller is amazing. Uh, backwards compatibility is awesome. So this is a, my PS4 Modern Warfare. You just, because I have the disc version, but it's the same thing. The digital games are all compatible too. Um, the hardware, the, the, the PS5, unlike the PS4 to PS3, because PS3 was on the cell architecture, completely different. These are no, more traditional x86 architectures. So, you can throw your PS4 discs in the PS5, and they work. That's great. Um, it's an awesome feature for the PlayStation that, you know, the previous Xbox, I believe, had, but, and the current one does. But the PlayStation didn't do that, 4 to 3, because they couldn't for various reasons. Anyway, um, another cool thing about this is there is the 
um, PlayStation Plus collection. Um, and this is for PS5. So when you have get a PS5, I don't know how long they're leaving this up. So it's kind of tied in with the PS5 launch window. But if you get a PS5 as of now and the near future, you automatically get access to all of these games, digital downloads of them. And the cool thing about the PlayStation versus like the Xbox, right now it says download because I added them. But when you start, it just has add to library. So you can just click on add to library. And so then when you go into your game library, boop -a -doo 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 -doo. under your game library for your collection, um, it shows all of those games. So I, for instance, like what's one that is in there? Like um, for the collection, um, all these collection games that go in there, like God of War, right? So it's got PlayStation Plus on there. Added it to my collection and I haven't downloaded it, but it's in here. And so if I wanna play it, I just have to click on download. It'll download and install it. So those things go into your collection so that you can go and get them. So the years that I've spent on PlayStation Plus, every game, every month they release a game on PlayStation Plus that you can, that you get to add to it. Um, so I'll include that as well as the instant collection. PlayStation Plus gets, every month, they release a couple of games um, for free that you can add to your library, even if you don't wanna play them right there. You just click on Add to Library, they go to your library, and boom, you've got them. As long as you're a PlayStation Plus, mem Plus member, you can go back and download them. Um, so I'll go back to the PlayStation Plus little widget here. So yeah, the collection is kind of the PS5 launch window thing, so all of these get added to your library, you get to keep them. There's good stuff in here, the you know, Crash Bandicoot Trilogy, Days Gone, Uncharted 4, Last of Us Remastered, Last Guardian, like these God of War. I, I haven't even played this God of War yet, but it's got amazing reviews, I, I need to play it. But you get all of this, just, so that's cool. That's a, and the, this, the month when I'm recording this, uh, these are the PS5 monthly games. Destruction All-Stars is a launch one, so it's been out for a while. Um, Maquette is the uh, PS5 monthly game, and then Remnant and the Final Fantasy VII Remake are the PS4 games, so you can obviously do those. If you don't have the PS5 and your PlayStation Plus member, you get those on PlayStation. You guys probably know how that works. If you don't, that's how it works. So that's a cool thing to do. Um, so you also have different uh, discounts and stuff if you're a PlayStation Plus member. You pay $60 a year uh, for PlayStation Plus, that's the going rate. Unless you watch my video on how to save like over 50% on PlayStation Plus. So go check go check that video out. I'll try to remember to link it below. Um, but otherwise, you, you in addition to the free games you get every month, there's also like discounts. So it looks like there's an, a pre-order discount for Deathloop, it's not out yet. Um, or games that are out, you know, you can, oh, those are already in my library. You know, like Heavy Rain and Beyond over the years have been added to PlayStation Plus for the monthly free game. So I've got all these games I've never played that are just in my library in case I ever have a down month and want to just play some games. So um, that's cool. But yeah, there's all of these discounts if you're a Plus member. You can buy stuff for cheap. These change. So that's cool. That's cool stuff. Um, I think <laughs> I got to switch to the cons now because it's as, as I'm recording this and as I'm posting it, this is April 2021, and the consoles came out, what, November 2020. So they've been out a good half year by now, right? And there are still no really significant game exclusives for either console, but not for the PlayStation. So there's, there's not a ton to talk about else on that. So the cons, I think, are where you're really gonna start to see the differentiator between the PlayStation and the Xbox. So let's talk about the PS5 cons right now, and these things, it's been six months, you would hope a lot of these have gotten fixed, but they haven't yet, and it's awful. Some of these are really fucking terrible. So the first one I will say is that rest mode is absolutely broken on the PlayStation 5. Um, so those of you know in P PlayStation 4, um, you can go into rest mode and it puts the console in standby mode and it'll still download system updates and video and your game updates in the background. So the next time you turn your console on, all of your, like if you play Call of Duty and they always have those huge updates, with rest mode, that stuff will download in the background and then when you turn the console back on, everything will be up to date. You can just, whenever your console comes on, you can be pretty sure that everything's gonna be updated. That's broken. If you do that, I have not put my console into rest mode and it not, for lack of a better term, bricked itself. Like where it won't come back on properly unless I like hard power reset it. And I've seen all kinds of different theories about what causes this. I do have extended storage um, connected to my PlayStation. That's been the most common theory on what causes this. Um, so there, I've got a two terabyte 
hard drive hooked to my PlayStation for extended storage, which we'll talk about as well, why that's completely necessary. Um, but I've disconnected it. I've turned it off to where it doesn't it doesn't register here, and rest mode still doesn't work. So I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's it's broken. I can't use it at all because if I do and I have my extended storage connected, then it corrupts the ex extended storage. It hasn't caused any loss yet, but it has to do that. We're waiting to repair your file system every time I restart it from rest mode. So that means all those game updates, all those system updates, I have to turn my PlayStation on and let those queue up because I have to turn off my PlayStation every single time. Rest mode is broken. It's fucking awful. Like, that's all I'm gonna say about that right now, but we're six months into this PS5 and this doesn't fucking work. It's awful, it's terrible, I can't use rest mode. Uh, giant advantage, Xbox. Um, what else, I got, I got notes that I'm referring to here. It's very persnickety, the, the PS5 with, I, I have a setup where I've got all these consoles, I've got a PS5 Series X, I got a PS4 Pro, uh, Xbox One X down there in a, in a splitter, or in a switch. So I've got all the consoles hooked to a switch so that I can switch between them, and then I've got a splitter so that it runs to my monitor in here that I game on, my 4K monitor, as well as through the wall to my 4K TV in the living room so that I can play the consoles either here or in my living room on the big screen. Um, the Series X handles all that shit without a, without a problem. The PS5 is really persnickety. Sometimes I have to hard reset the PlayStation, plug it out, unplug it, plug it back in, and plugging it in through a switch especially, it gets really grumpy. I don't know what it is, it's hard to put my finger on, but the PS5 is very persnickety with switches and splitters and capture devices in ways that the Series X just isn't. And in ways that the PS4 wasn't. PS4 did this stuff effortlessly too. So there's some there's some firmware, some some firmware stuff, some software stuff that needs to be fixed in the PS5. Not good. Uh, the revamped dashboard. It's the, what we're looking at right here. I don't like it versus the old XMB. Um, and the main reason why, so this is the same, right? Okay, that makes sense. You go to your library, you can access this stuff. But since it's all integrated now, right? Now when you click on it or whatever, well, that's a game launch. That's not a good example. <laughs> uh, when you go here, when you go home and you go to like PlayStation, uh, no, let's go to PlayStation Store. This is my favorite example because you used to click on PlayStation Store and it opened the store. And you would get you would get like the little sidebar and it would let you like search and but look, that's what it did. I clicked on it, and it just kind of drops me down there. So it's like they're trying to make it a more seamless experience, but for me, when I open something, I want it to look like I went into something. But now I gotta browse through here, and then I guess, because there's if you go up here, then there's like the search for the system search. So if I go down to the PlayStation Store, then I guess I scroll up to get back to the tabs, but not up twice, because that'll take me back here. So if I scroll down and then up, and then I can go over to search, and then I guess that lets me search for games. Um, and then I got, so, and then all of the, wait, I'm in browse now. Wait, where, no, I don't wanna go back to browse. So I go, to, so there's latest. I don't like it, I don't like it. I, don't, I mean, I'm not one of those people that just like hates change. I like things that are changed for the better, but this is less, intuitive and confusing and if I'm scrolling through like I'm going down 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 if I go up one too many times now I'm back in the in the normal system like I I can accidentally exit out of what I'm in like the PlayStation Store what I'm looking at and 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 be back in the system browsing through my games and stuff and it's not really obvious how that works so I don't like it and the other thing I don't like about it um, is they changed the way the PlayStation button works. So it used to be you hold down the PlayStation button and it brings up the sleep and the power menu. I just held it down and it did fuck all. It doesn't do anything. You tap it and it brings up this, this pop-up crossbar menu, okay? Which takes a lot of getting used to. I still haven't gotten used to it. I've been doing this for six months and I still do it wrong. Um, and so then you got your power and stuff in here. But here's the thing, like if you're out here, right, and you've got a game and you have the options button, Right, like right there, that little doo doo. If you hit that, it brings up a little context menu for your game, right? Check for updates, get information about it, whatever, right? You bring up this little crossbar thing and you go down here and you've got a game select. Say I wanna close a game, right? Right now I've got Astro's Playroom open, right? So let's say I wanna close it through my little XMB. I go to my switcher here and I hit the little options button to try and close it and it brings up this customize your XM, your menu thing. 
which is like, no, I don't want it. So I always do this, and then I have to hit circle to back up, and then you have to click X to open the, the whatever item you're on. So like if I'm looking at the switcher, I'm looking at the game I have active. Oh, I don't, damn, don't call me. I'm looking at the game I have active. I have to click X to click on it, and then it shows all of my games I can switch between. And then I can hit the options button, and then I can close the game from here, or go to its game hub, and 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 then I'm not sure where I am. And oh, and then I'm not back in the XMB again. So then if I want to switch users, I go down here, and then then there's switch user. That used to, I used to be able to access all this no matter where I am, just by holding down the PlayStation button. That used to come up. Now you hold down the PlayStation button, it doesn't fucking do anything. And if I tap it, it brings up this fucking this fucking menu. I don't like that. That's not better. <laughs> That's confusing. That's worse. I'm a pretty smart guy. That's fucked. That's just not great. Um, other things. Uh, tiny hard drive. Tiny. Let's see. Storage. Right now. Console storage. Game. Uh, it's a 667 gigabyte hard drive. Which these days, I mean, these days, that's just not a lot at all. So what have I got on here? So items you can delete is stuff that you can't move onto extended storage because PS5 only, right? So you've got items you can move. Well, items you can delete includes everything, but items you can move is stuff that is that doesn't require being on the PS5 to work, right? So the only thing right now is 93 megabytes for Spotify, which I could move to extended storage. I, I probably ought to, but the problem is if my extended storage gets fucked up, then I just don't have something like Spotify, whatever, that's not a big deal. Point is, right now, Everything that's on here, <laughs> on my internal hard drive, is stuff that can only run on here. So I've got YouTube, Spotify, Plex. I've got Maneater, which I haven't played yet, which is a 10 gigabyte game, one of the one of the instant collection games or PlayStation Plus games. I want to play it. It's like a shark game. Destruction All Stars, which I haven't played yet. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which is 250 gigabytes, and that's not Warzone and Modern Warfare. That's on my extended storage. I had to move it because of the last update. And then Astro's Playroom. This is all I've got on here, and what have I... So I've got some room, I think, right now, right? What does it say? Okay, so I still have 400 gigabytes. I can install a couple more games on here. Um, but, if you look at my extended storage, I've got 1.3 terabytes of stuff on here. And this stuff would go faster if it's put on the internal SSD. I've moved it off because I need space for some of this stuff. And I haven't kind of reshuffled, because what I did have on there was... Where is it? Modern Warfare. So this I kept on my internal hard drive because I use it regularly. This is Warzone as well as, as Modern Warfare 2019, which I still play regularly because it's better than Cold War. Anyway, with this last update, there, it was like a 90 gig update. So I had to literally copy all 280 gigs or 250 gigs of the game off to my extended storage so that there was enough room for it to update. And now I'm not even gonna move it back. The loading times are slower now, which sucks because it's not on the SSD. But I'm not fucking moving back because the move the copy time is super slow, which is weird. I have kind of the same setup for my Series S and my Series X for an extended storage, and it seems like they copy way faster. I don't know if there's something about it. Just it definitely feels that way. So I don't know if maybe there's a user experience thing, or if they're just throttling the copy. I don't know what they're doing. Seems a lot slower, and I'm hooked up through the USB three port I think although I'm copying it up it's a hard it's a hard disk it's a magnetic platter hard drive it would go a lot faster to an SSD I know all that but still same thing on the Xbox magnetic platter hard disk seems to copy faster so they they haven't released yet the the compatible SSDs that will allow you to get a bigger one like here's the thing is you're gonna need like an NVMe gen 4 Sony compatible SSD and I'm going to want to throw in like a two terabyte one minimum, which is going to be like the largest that'll be available most likely within the next couple of years, just because right now one and two terabyte NVMe SSDs are ridiculous. Like as far as expensive and capacity and stuff like that, right? You can get a, a two or four terabyte normal SSD, still expensive, but anyway. That said, you'll know one or two terabytes. If I want to put in, I'm guessing now, right? If I want to put a two terabyte NVMe SSD expansion in there so that the total system storage size would be about 2.6 terabytes, right? With the size of games and stuff like that. Even games that I have on disk, that's just how much space they take up. That's probably going to cost an extra $500. That, just the SSD. And the entire fucking console costs $500. 
So I understand that the reason they, that they and the Series X both put in these limited capacity SSDs is because of cost, but still, it fucking matters. <laughs> like, it just does. Um, and it matters that it's a pain in the butt to copy things to it, and that you can't put it in rest mode because it can corrupt your external storage. I had it literally corrupt my external storage to a point where when it started back up, my console started re-downloading the games that I had installed to my external storage on my internal storage because it noticed that they were missing before I realized that the external storage had been disconnected by the PlayStation. So I downloaded like a hundred gigs of data before I realized that it just had, didn't, that it had kind of fucked over my external drive and I had to unplug, restart, make, and then it was like, it had half of the game downloaded to the internal storage and then the entire game exists on the internal, external storage and then it got confused and I had to, it was a pain in the butt. Oh, also, the last thing for the PS5, there's no fucking games. <laughs> That's true for the Series X right now, but for games that I care about, I mean, there is. There's some games that are PS5 exclusive, but nothing that I give a shit about. The only one that I would really kind of want to play is Miles Morales, the Spider-Man one, but that's really just an expansion off the existing Spider-Man game that's on PS4. I hear it's great. I haven't got it yet. I haven't been motivated to get it. The only PS5 game I think I technically have right now is Cold War, and that's because when I bought it on the PS4, I wasn't sure I was going to get the PS5 at launch. I kind of got lucked out with a launch day order direct from PlayStation. So I bought the cross-gen bundle on the PS4, and so I got a digital copy on the PS5. I paid like an extra 10 bucks on the PS4, and I got both. I'm relatively certain that's the only PS5 game that I have that didn't come out of like one of the free games that PlayStation is, has released. So it's really just been kind of Cold War for me so far. <laughs> and uh, when you get to the Xbox, let's talk about that. It's only really been Assassin's Creed Valhalla on Xbox, which I could have gotten on the PlayStation instead, but Anyway, so that's that's kind of the PS5 right now. So as you can kind of get, like, my overall impression of the PS5 is... I mean, I guess we could talk about the hardware versus the PS4 Pro. The performance is better. I mean, it's noticeably a little bit, you know, noticeably better and stuff like that. With my PS4 Pro, because I had an older one, I, had to, I did another video on that. I had to install an aftermarket fan because it had the jet engine sound. Um, but even under load, even with that better fan, it's a little bit louder. The PS5 handles it a lot better. The PS5 is a lot quieter. Um, perform performance is obviously better. It's the newer, better hardware. It just is. So if you already have a PS4 and you're thinking about upgrading to the PS5, is it urgent that you do it right away? No, it really isn't. If you can afford to and you can find one, should you? Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is going to age really well, I feel like. They're going to update it. Things are going to get better. You know, PlayStation has, has been my bread and butter for a long time. I had a I had a mixed history with the PS3 period and transitioning to the Xbox 360 and then coming back to PS4. Anyway, I, it's going to be a good, it's a good console. It's going to be great. Whether or not it's going to win this console generation, it's hard to tell. They dominated the last console generation just from making good game choices. Uh, but... It's too early to tell how things are going to go with actual exclusive games. Is you know, is what's Naughty Dog going to do? They're going to keep doing Uncharted. It sounds like they're kind of almost done with Uncharted. Maybe they're going to continue doing Last of Us. Maybe they'll do something brand new. Um, Gran Turismo. Like, what are what are my favorite kind of PlayStation exclusive games? The uh, Horizon games are kind of like a new franchise that's that's pretty awesome. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. But do you got to get one right now? No, not really. If you can find a PS4 Pro on the cheap. I would do that, probably. I need. I wanted to have new hotness right out of the gate, but they got some stuff to fix, man. So that's my thoughts on the PS5. Let me switch it over to the Series X, and we'll talk about that for a little bit. All right, so I've switched over to my Series X. Um, so let's kind of talk through some of these things to kind of drive. Um, first thing I'll say about the Series X, and this applies to the Series S as well, as far as I can tell. Um, just from my use. And so you guys know, I have a PS5, uh, my hand here, I have a PS5 physical edition, it's got the disk drive. There's no difference between the PS5 physical, the, the one with the disk drive and one without the disk drive, other than the disk drive being missing. It's got the same hardware, same motherboard, same specs, all that stuff. So there's no functional difference between the two. The Series X and the Series S are functionally different. The Series S doesn't have as much graphical horsepower. It's much smaller. It's digital only. There's no disk drive. Um, 
So it's important to note that I have the PS5 with the disk drive, and I have the P and I have the Series X and the Series S. And it's important because I know how the Series S and X work, and so I'll be discussing both of those. So you can kind of decide between the two. Um, but there's no need for me to have both versions of the PlayStation because they otherwise are fun are are exactly the same. The Series S is is different is very different from the Series X. And by very different I mean the interface is the same but it does like I said it doesn't push as much horsepower and it has no uh, physical disk drive. And it's and the internal SSD is smaller. I think the I think the Series S is 512 gigs and then the Series X is a terabyte. So, the Xboxes just work. I plug them into my splitters, I plug them into my uh, switches. I turn I push the button to turn it on and it turns on and it works and and if I unplug my capture device and plug it back in it just it just works again the the HTCP and HDMI handshakes on the PS5 can get confused really easily the P, the Xbox that just doesn't happen if I turn it on the Xbox just works it's gonna show up um, backwards compatibility I haven't necessarily tested it directly, but mine's the Series X has the disk drive, so it's backwards compatible with like every generation. Again. I think I can pretty much throw almost any Xbox, Xbox One or Series X game into that thing, and I'm pretty sure it'll work. Um, and and a lot of those are on on going back to the I say Xbox. I don't know I don't know how much the original Xbox, um, Xbox 360, Xbox One, all those. So. I have thrown Xbox 360 games into my Series X and they do work. So I had, I don't know if it's still installed, I probably uninstalled it. But I threw like some of my old Xbox 360 like Battlefield games and stuff in here. Matter of fact, I played, that I, I must have, I'm, I, I don't know if I uninstalled it. Uh, oh no, it's right there. So Battlefield 3, I played my Xbox 360, I put my Xbox 360 Battlefield 3 disc into the Series X and it installed and it worked and I was able to connect online and play the game. I did so go go see my most recent Battlefield 3 on Xbox 360 Series X video. I literally threw it in, connected to Xbox Live and, and played. It was it worked. <laughs> so great. Um, so yeah, so it works. Backwards compatibility is great. Um, better than the PlayStation because the PlayStation had that weird adolescent phase with the PS3 where it kind of made things weird. The Xbox is, those of you who don't know, the name Xbox comes from Microsoft Direct X, which is their kind of graphics rendering engine. The original Xbox is called the Xbox because of Direct X. So these have been consistent built on x86 architectures running Direct X. So they all just play nice really with each other. I mean, with some minor exceptions, but the backwards compatibility on the Xbox is fantastic. Um, I put it on here, but the Game Pass, and especially Game Pass Ultimate, which is what I have, is an insane bargain. And I didn't, I even completely forgot to go into it. I was going to mention it on PS5 when I was in there, but I forgot because it doesn't really matter to me. PlayStation has PlayStation Now, which is $60 a year, so it's like about 5 bucks a month. And it has a, a library of PlayStation games, but not really any ones that are like, it doesn't really like make me excited. I I've got I got the ultimate subscription on, on Xbox because it's this insane deal with all these great games that I want to play. For me personally, PlayStation Now doesn't have that. It doesn't. I have PlayStation Plus. I think that's a great deal for the free games that they give you. I've looked through the PlayStation Now library and there's just nothing in there really that makes me want to play it because it doesn't have a lot of the best Sony exclusives and. I already own all of the best Sony exclusives. That's why I have a PlayStation. So having PlayStation now, like the good games on PlayStation I already have. There's a lot of games on Xbox that I would like to play that I never bought or don't play. We'll get into that more, but anyway, that's just to address the fact that I didn't address it on the PlayStation side of it. But on the Xbox side, I am addressing it because there's a lot of great shit in here. And I'm gonna mention why it's even more valuable with the Series S. So Xbox 360 stuff, uh, also, you know, Minecraft Dungeons, Mirror's Edge, Doom Eternal. Microsoft also just bought Bethesda indirectly, more or less, right? So those just got added. So there's, um, so there it is, Bethesda Software. So these just got added. So all these awesome Bethesda games, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of these 90 hour plus RPGs, but I mean, objectively Fallout 4, Skyrim, Fallout 76, well, like, these are like the Morrowind, yeah, Elder Scrolls, yeah, like 
just good, good, great games. And then what, like, uh, just, just jump into all, like, just look through what's in Game Pass. There's, wait, what is that? What am I looking at here? Platform, oh, platformers. No, I don't want platformers. Just show me, just show me, don't show me all, there's EA Play. Where, hold on. <laughs> there, there's show all. I got lost for a second. So this is what's in Game Pass, right? So, I mean, just looking at stuff like, let's not talk about Anthem. Um, Alien Isolation, Alan Wake, Ace Combat, Assetto Corsa, uh, Beards, Beards, Bards, Bards Tale, Beards Tale, Battlefield 1943, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Bad Company, those are coming from EA Play, right? Bad Company, Hardline, Battlefield 5, like that's the newest Battlefield game, EA Play, it's on here, Battletoads, we're just in the B's, right? Like, Crisis, Cricket, like it's got FIFA, it's got like Madden, Dead Space, like Destiny, uh, Destiny 2 is free to play, but I think, like Beyond Light, I think is an expansion. So I don't know, if, I don't know if it's a paid piece. I think there might be some paid stuff included in the Game Pass that's not on the free to play Destiny 2. You guys that are Destiny 2 fans can correct me. Dishonored, Doom, and there's just random like fun little games. Look, Fables, FIFA, Football Manager, Forza, Forza 7, and Forza Horizon 4. Fusion Frenzy from the original Xbox. That's a good party game. You want a party game? Get some Fusion Frenzy going. All the Gears of War games, including Tactics. Halos, all the Halo games. Like, I mean, Mass Effect, Mirror's Edge, NBA, Elder Scrolls, Peggle. <laughs> I, I, what was the, the, the Dirt, Dirt, the new Dirt game I think is already on here now. Um, Squadrons got added back in here. It was like a free to play. I did a video on it when it was a free to play weekend, but now it's part of the Game Pass. Like, uh, yeah, the EA EA Play Game Pass. State of K two. Like, all this. There's just so much good stuff in here. And and uh, so I pointed that out. In addition to that, for the Series S, which is digital only, Game Pass is ridiculous because I have the Game Pass Ultimate, which. I should mention, the Game Pass Ultimate also means that a lot of these games work on your PC as well. I'm not much of a PC gamer, but I can install these on my PC and they, like, most of these games. Great! That all, you get all of that for 15 bucks a month, like, and that includes your Xbox Live Gold subscription, which is normally 60 bucks a year. So that's like about 5 bucks a month that you're already paying. So this is like 10 bucks on top of that for EA Play, Bethesda games, everything that's in the Microsoft Game Pass stuff that's not part of those. It's an insane deal. And and with the Series S being digital only, like I've got that and the kids basically use the Series S. I got it and just hooked it up out there. And a lot of these are like not Series X games. Some of them are like Series, like Minecraft Dungeons, like Series X and S. A lot of these are kind of previous generation games. So I have like a three terabyte hard drive hooked to the Series S out there and the kids can download basically whatever they want, whenever they want, and just play random games. It's amazing, like Seb loves it. Um, Cause he can just, oh look, a new game. And he'll just, like he's playing Slime Rancher right now, I think is what it's called. Let's see, let's go down to S's. There's so much stuff, it's hard to, hard to sort through all of it. OP, PUBG, oh, look at that. Uh, but that's free to play anyway. So slime, is that part of this? It's slime. Oh, there it is, Slime Rancher. So Seb's been playing the crap out of this, and he just saw it in here, and he's like, okay, I'll download it and install it, and I don't know what it normally costs. Does it have a, see it in the store, does it cost something? I don't even know, because it just didn't Game Pass. Or buy it, oh, look at that, it's $20 normally. I could buy it for $16. So it's kind of like Netflix, some of these things go in and out of the game, out of the market, so there was one in here that was uh, Untitled Goose Game that was a lot of fun, Seb and I played together, it dropped out of here. So some of these go in and out so you can buy them so that they're always available, but that's a $20 game. I never would spend $20 to get Slime Rancher for Seb, but he's been playing the crap out of it. They, I mean, there you go. Like, so, yeah, I, I guess I could stop gushing about that, but Game Pass is a fucking steal. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do a video soon. It's a lot like my PlayStation one, so hopefully I can save you guys some money on Game Pass as well. Um, it wasn't as simple because they had that kind of scare where they were like, Xbox Live is going to be more expensive, um, and then they backpedaled on that. So you can't really get Xbox Live subscriptions at as much of a discount as you can PlayStation Plus subscriptions, and I think it's because of that right now. 
I'll try to help you guys in a future video save some money on Game Pass. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we'll just talk about that. It's just for, if you got the Series S, this is absolutely a must have because it's digital only. Unless you want to just pay full price for digital games for the Series S, Game Pass is amazing. You download these one, two gig gigabyte games that are normally 15, 20 bucks, and boom. What am I? What am I doing here? What are you? What are you doing to me, Xbox? You're almost making me look silly. I don't know why I went black there. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, moving games to and from extended storage is super simple. Um, let me pull up some. Let me pull up the settings real quick. Yeah. Oopsie, a little messy with the stick there. So on storage. So my Series X, I don't currently have any extended storage hooked to just because anything that I kind of need on the extended storage, I can use on the Series S. I could easily add an extended storage to the X. And for the Series S, I do it all the time where I'm copying stuff back and forth between the internal SSD and the external storage. It's effortless, it's fast, it seems way faster than the PS5, I'm not sure why. Um, currently, I have, let's see, what's in, let's see what's in here. So, games, let me just do full library. Oh no, that's my full library total. So I got some apps, but basically games. So what's installed to my hard drive right now? Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 5, Warzone since it's free to play, so that's installed. Will that show how big it is? Um, 150 gigs right now. Forza 7, Forza Horizon 4, Dirt 5, Destiny 2. So this hard drive is, they call it a terabyte. It's got 800 gigabytes after the operating system but that's still like 120 gigs more than um, than the PS5. Like it's more, it's it's noticeably more than the PS5. I mean, that's enough to basically put Warzone on there, <laughs> right? I mean, how much bigger is it than the PS5? It's essentially this much. Like that matters. It's it's a, it's a difference, and especially when you're paying the same price. This one just, the Xbox just works. It has Game Pass, 500 bucks, the same as the PS5. It's got beefy hardware, it has great, like it does HDR, all that stuff, 4K. It's good, it's good stuff. Like, yeah, it's easy to use. It works, it works really well. Um, it's also got a unified experience with Xbox One. So what do I mean by that? When I first fired this up, and I actually posted it in a video, uh, my setup experience with the Series X. I was confused because the first time it launched after I did all the install stuff, it looks exactly like my Xbox One dashboard. Like it even has my groups and all these games identically. So it looks almost indistinguishable. It could be a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's kind of a good thing. It's like, oh my God, am I on my Xbox One? Because everything is tied to my Microsoft account, to my gamer tag, and it just and it was just pulled in when I installed. So my apps, my games, even if it's stuff that's not installed, like I don't think I have Apex installed, right? But it's in the apps here. So if I click on that, I could install it just like that. Cause it's just, if it's on my Series X, but it's not on here, it's as easy as that. Like, and you can set up application groups like this. I'm not aware of a way to do that on the PS5 or the PS4. So I can create groups. I have one that's called Weezy's Games. I could create more groups and I could subdivide these down if I want to, but it's like all the games that I really care about or have installed, or maybe I uninstalled it because I wanted to save space, but I want to leave it in here. So if I want to fire it up, like if I want to fire up Odyssey, I just can click on it and reinstall it and play it. That's nice. It's great. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's all of the stuff about the Xbox is just like, well, when I turn it on, it works. <laughs> and it does what I want it to and the games play well like it's just a good experience you know and the the Xbox Series X controller has one new button like this share button versus the Xbox one so there's nothing new about this there's no haptic triggers or anything like that the texture on it is better than the Xbox one texture controller but there's nothing this controller is not as advanced as the PS5 controller Okay, but guess what? You can use Xbox One controllers on your Series X. So I have one controller came with my Series X, one controller came with my Series S, right? And they're the same controller. This one's black, the other one's white, but they have the share button, whatever. But otherwise they're the same. I have two Xbox One controllers that also work on the Series X. So instantly I have four controllers. The PS5, 
One comes with the console. I bought a second one so that I can play some multiplayer games with the kids, but I don't I didn't buy four because they're like they're not sixty bucks. I think they're like eighty bucks. Seventy or eighty bucks for this. Worth it. There's more technology in here. It's worth it. Uh but I'd have I'm not gonna spend another 160 bucks right now on two more controllers. I already have more Xbox controllers because I have Xbox One controllers. And there's not backs there's it's this you can't use um, PS4 controllers on PS5 games because they don't have some of the extra features. Um, anyway, so that another thing can matter. I'm glad PS5 updated the controller. I'm glad they've got that cool new technology. But this is nice too to have just the old controllers that just work. Um, yeah, so those are kind of like all the big kind of good things that I had listed for the Series X and the Series S, right? Series X is, be the Series S, maybe a little confusion about this, outputs at a max 1440p, but it upscales to 4K, right? So you hook it to your 4K TV, it's in 4K. <laughs> all right, so the, P the Series S will output 4K, but it's upscaled 1440p. It's not so bad that you'd really make it be, it's, it's not, you don't want, look at it and be like, oh my God, this looks like dog shit compared to the Series X. It's not that big of a difference. It really isn't. Um, that said, it is a difference and it is noticeable. The Series X just is better. It's more powerful. So that's good to know versus the S. The Series X versus the PS5, kind of no distinguishable difference from a normal user experience. I'm a pretty advanced tech savvy user. So the people who want to do like, play the same game on the two consoles and see which has the higher average frame rate okay there might be a difference for your normal user experience it's not going to be a huge deal you're not counting frames i haven't experienced significant stuttering really on either of them so whatever there it's kind of tossed up so let's go to some cons let's talk some let's talk some trash on the xbox the series x it looks fucking boring as shit it's a big black plastic rectangle and it pushes heat out the top which is confusing anytime I lean over to like reach the cords in the back of my entertainment center I feel like something's wrong with the Xbox because the, the heat gets generated straight up it's efficient it's quiet it's got good cooling and it's quiet but there's heat real heat that radiates out the top of it it's not a downside but and but it's what it is and the console looks fucking boring it's just a black box the PS5 is I think it's beautiful. It's huge. It's a chunk. It's a big motherfucker. You can't really tell back there. It's kind of in the background, but it's fucking big. Um, but it's pretty. It looks nice. It looks like a. It looks like a decorative piece. Um, that's a minor complaint, right? Uh, the UI is still cluttered and confusing. Uh, this, you know, you can organize your apps and stuff like that. It's glad that they. I'm glad that they let you organize stuff because it can be hard to find things. So like every month when I want to get my my free xbox live game when if you're an xbox live gold member you also get free games every month but then it's like i always get confused at how i'm gonna get there so i use the store quite a bit so it's just up here otherwise i have to go and like find the store or go to like i'm not even entirely okay so the store has like a tab down here so i could do that and then there's top free games isn't those free games that's like free to play games and then the specials isn't really the specials. so if i just click on the store Subscriptions. I think they've made it a little easier to get to. So there's subscriptions, and then it's not Game Pass, and it's not deals, and it's not Game Pass. So there's game. There's Live Gold. No, that's like buying the subscription. I do this like every month, and I still have trouble getting to it. So there's Game Pass. Okay, so here's the free games. So Vikings. Uh, ball. Oh, it's the new month. I haven't downloaded these yet. So I'll show you something that's actually kind of a con about this too. It's a little cluttered. It's a little hard to find. But also, if I want to uh download a new game that's one of my free ones right it's like okay so it's free with gold i gotta click on it all right cool got it um you can do check install progress but as soon as you click on click on it it starts installing right so then it's like oops okay well i don't want to play this right now so cancel that installation okay go back all right good so i've got it so now it's installable I've claimed it. If you don't claim it before it expires, then you don't get it, right? So you have to actually go in and claim every one of these every month. And I'm not gonna play all of these every month. So I gotta get it and then, okay, got it. I'm just gonna go to got it because I'm gonna download all of them, right? So 
There's a little bit, I think, a different interface for the 360 games. It goes to like a different screen for the pricing. Let's see. Loading. Uh, got it. Okay, cool. Are you good? Do I got it? Okay. Since okay. Uh, is there any more? Oh, that's not okay. So those are the three. So those are the three games. So there's like two, and then like a 360. Okay. So now I got to go to. Um, shit. I need to get there before it's downloading too much of it. Um. Uh. Oh, so I can click. So I got my games and apps. So I can click on one that's actually installing. Then I can go to see full queue. Now I can cancel all of them. I don't want to download any of these right now, but now they're in my library, so now I can download them in the future. So I got three free games. Um, but that's pain. In the PlayStation, you saw where it, that download button was I showed you before, those games I already claimed. You can click Add to Library, and that puts it in your library, and it doesn't start downloading it. You can click again to start the download if you want it immediately, but it doesn't force you to do it. With the Xbox, if you claim it, it automatically starts downloading it, and if you don't want it immediately, you have to go and cancel it. They've done this since the 360, it's been this way since the 360, and it needs to stop. <laughs> um, another relatively minor quibble, but it is, and it's just, it's still confusing to navigate. It just is. Um, it's not great. I liked the 360's interface better, and this is the exact same as the Xbox One. So the Xbox One and this one are, are shitty. The other thing that I will point out, I created a video on this because I got so confused by it when I plugged my headphones into my um, controller and the game audio was really quiet and was really and uh, was really strange about it is if I hooked up my old Xbox One controller to the Series X, my headset's volume was fine. But on the new controllers, it was really low. And I thought, oh, maybe the headset's not compatible with the new controllers. And I went in and I was like, okay, well maybe it's a setting. Maybe it's one of the audio settings. So I went into settings and I went into, let's see, there's sound, volume, and audio output. So like chat mixer, it has like, okay, well that's not it. Party chat out, well that's not it. HDMI, no, it's not, I mean it's not really one of those. Let's see, headbed output, I was like, no, it's not HD stuff, no, that's not right. Headset form, okay, whatever. Using HD, okay. So you can't, couldn't figure out how to, like I couldn't just adjust the volume for the headset and, and I couldn't, so I had to go look it up on Reddit. I was like, hey, like, I'm Googling Reddit, Googling Reddit, which is true. I do Google and I put Reddit in it, so it searches Reddit from Google. Hey, I'm having issues with my friggin, I can't fix the volume on my headset on the Series X. Well, if you hit the guide button, down here all the way at the bottom on the right is this little volume button. And this is what controls your headset volume independently. Now you may say, especially if you've been around the Xbox One for a while, I can't believe you didn't know that that was there because um, it's been there forever. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the Xbox One, period. Um, I spent, you know, I played the PlayStation 4 for most of that cycle. And I got my Series X and I couldn't, I had to Google this to find this. I'm pretty fucking tech savvy. And I create, it was so difficult for me to find when I figured it out, I made a video, it's like a two minute video that just shows this. I have had tens of thousands of views on that video and like literally like dozens or hundreds of people commenting saying, thank God I found your video because I was about to buy a new headset. I thought my controller was broken. This is not a good <laughs> layout. This is not where that should be. Or it should be here and it should have an entry in the settings in the menu so that you can find it. Literally tens of thousands of people minimum haven't been able to figure this out easily without finding my video. And that's just people that found my video. Who knows how many people don't find my video or find other video, I don't know, but that's fucked. <laughs> All right, so that's another thing, another, you know, I'm gonna complain, I'm gonna complain, I'm gonna complain about that thing, I'm gonna complain. So let's, so should you get a Series X if you have an Xbox One X? Cause that outputs in 4K as well. Um, I mean, if you already have a One X, it's the same thing. You don't really need to get a Series X there's not any, I mean, I think even the PS5 has a couple of like exclusives. I'm not sure Xbox has any right now, like at all. <laughs> at least not any worth having. I mean, I guess I could look, but. So if you, if you have a ser if you have a Xbox One, should you get one of these right now? Maybe not. But if you don't, should you get one? Or if you want one, should you get one? I mean, yeah, it works great. As far as a standalone, con Here, here's what I'll tell you. I haven't turned on my Xbox One X since I, since I got this, I've used the Series S a bunch, I've used the Series X a bunch. Um, I've turned on my PS4 a couple of times 
since getting my PS5, just because of the extra, like sometimes I can install games on my PS4 Pro, <laughs> just because I have some install space on there. And I have four controllers. If I want to play like split screen Call of Duty with my kids on, and I only have two controllers on the PS5, I gotta go to the PS4. That's not an issue on the Series X and S. So um, is it worth getting the X? Yeah, I mean, it is. It's Is it critical to get one right now? No. The PS5, you've got growing pains right now. There's some shit that needs to get fixed. Rest mode doesn't work. Rest mode on the Xbox works just fine. Everything's always updated. I come back in here, everything's up to date, working, it's great. So that said, if I'm looking at both of them, what if you're trying to decide between which one you should get? There's a couple ways you can look at it. Which ecosystem are you, are you already in, right? I've got, where am I? I got 53,000 gamer score on the Xbox and most of those are Xbox 360 games. <laughs> um, actually, let's show. Oh, look at that, an Xbox One. Uh, maybe not easily in here, but what's that, nine years I've been an Xbox Live member. Uh, I don't even know what my PlayStation level is. The trophies aren't quite as satisfying because it doesn't keep like a score like this. I like that this is a score. It's like, what's my gamer score? 53,355. What's my PSN level? I've played a t like quite a bit of PlayStation. I don't even know. What am I, a level eight, nine, whatever? But it feels like a grind too. Like, what have I been a PlayStation member for five, six, seven, eight years or something like that? I'm like a level, I don't even know, level 10, 11. I don't even know what, but... What if I get some silver trophies or I get some bronze trophies? What does that do? I don't know. It's just like, oh, I got a trophy, yay. Chasing gamer score is a little bit more interesting. I don't know why. There's some gamifying it in your brain that works better. Um, that said, if you're in either ecosystem, if you've already got a PlayStation profile or an Xbox profile and you care about your persistent trophies or whatever, stick with whatever you're with. I think you're gonna be fine either way. Which one do I spend more time on right now? Kind of objectively by choice would be the series x the series x is better right now which i'm a playstation guy so it kind of pains me to say that but the series x is just objectively better right now it works better it's more reliable it just does what it's supposed to out of the box the playstation 5 doesn't it just doesn't really work right now i can't put it into rest mode you kidding me like the quality of life stuff of the playstation the playstation 5 irritates the fuck out of me it feels like i have to fight with it to play games if I want to play something on the Series X, I know I just push this button and it's going to work. And not only that, but if I tap this button, it's going to bring up the guide like it always has. And if I hold it down, it's going to bring up the turn off or go to sleep like it's fucking supposed to, like the PS4 used to. So if I was blank slate, objectively choosing between the two, right now, it's Series X. Hmm. Do what I did, get both. <laughs> but that's just my thoughts. Tell me if you guys have one either, if you don't even have one, just give me your fucking thoughts anyway. But I figured I'd share that with you. Not a whole lot of people, you know, that are normal people that aren't game reviewers can sit down with both. I got lucky enough to get both of them. I'm an engineer. I get, this This is my, this is my hobby, my recreation time. So I get to spend $1,000 on video game consoles. Good job, me. Um, then I got lucky with pre-orders. I stayed up to like 3 a.m on launch day on the PS5 on the PlayStation Direct website and got lucky that I queued in to a, to an order. So I got to buy it at like 3 a.m. on launch day and kudos to PlayStation. It showed up at my door like two or three days later, like fast. Um, the Series X, I actually managed to get a pre-order. So that was a little bit of a smoother process. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I ramble, I talk a lot. If you guys have questions about them, you guys want me to answer because I have access to them, let me know. Um, I'll try and answer questions. Uh, maybe create follow-up videos if you need to. And give me you guys' thoughts on them. What do you think? Who's who's gonna win the console war? Who do you like better? Does, this sh does any of this shit matter to you? I should probably be switching back over to my... Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> my imaging edge app, not right now. Okay, minions. If you like this video, you found it helpful, leave me a like. If you dislike it because you're still playing on your Atari Lynx, or your Atari Jaguar, or your Atari 2600, or any Atari console, I love you, but you can dislike this video. I have those consoles, by the way. I have four Atari Lynx. Anyway, subscribe if you're not a minion. I do video game stuff and I have fun. And I will talk to you guys next time. See ya.